we're, we're going to have like this whole like little intro clip that explains what happened last time. So I, I don't actually remember what happened last time. Last time on KFC Dating Simulator. Joinan attended his first day of culinary school. He met Miriam, Ashley, Van Van, and our Lord and handsome savior Colonel Sanders. He bribed his teacher with chicken. <laughs> Nearly aced his first quiz. Ate the Colonel's secret recipe chicken and journeyed through time and space. Day one of the semester was over and it was time to compete in the cooking arena. No more gamers! It's Joinan and welcome back to the KFC Dating Simulator. This one! Where we have, uh, I love you, Colonel Sanders. Finger licking good dating simulator. Okay. No oh, dang. We're up to the third bite. That's right. It's all about, like, you get a bite of his KFC and you- Because it's a cooking school. That's what it is. Nugget. Biscuit. Nugget and a biscuit. Get all the mashed potato. All right. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. I don't know what a quad is. Uh, I don't remember exactly what voices I use. It's been a little while. I think he was American. Soft American. Oh. It's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look around the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. What do I sound like? Am I just me? It sounds like you have big plans! I dare say, the biggest. I will leave my mark in this world. You can bet on that. Oh boy, I will. Oh, here we go. Alone together for the first time. You figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Dang it, my, my head is too big. I gotta make my head a little bit smaller so we can read what's going on. <laughs> Whoop. Uh, okay, you're just gonna have to believe me what it says. Neg him to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea. To add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest, but thoughtful. Well, look, Mr. Colonel seems like a thoughtful guy. I think I'm gonna try be thoughtful. Be modest and thoughtful. I'm really trying to impress him. Well. I just want to tell you that I've really enjoyed your food. It was finger looking good, dude. Now, you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. I appreciate the compliment. Join in! <laughs> I'm sure you'll be a big success. People will talk of the day that they first tried. Mr. Colonel Sanders, finger looking good chicken. I know we've only met today, but... I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. Oh, wow. Wow. Thank you, Colonel. <laughs> we should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You're right, Mr. Colonel. And I will follow you to the ends of the earth as well as to class. You step inside the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Miriam. How did Miriam sound? I don't know. I should have checked. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally. We get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no. We have to show our stuff? What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything. Except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're gonna earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Um, with sprinkles British? Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Of course. Hey, um, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? As a two? That is me. Me and you, if if, if that wasn't clear. Uh, do you want to be partners? That's what, I, that's what I'm getting at. Sure, join in. I'll prepare our station. <laughs> oh, thank you, Colonel. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Pop. Hello. Partner. Beep, beep, bzz, bzz. <laughs> oh my! Two potential partners? I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose! It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to be Miriam's partner? Pop or Clank? Dude, it's Pop. I feel like Pop had a notable voice. Um, hey, maybe he- Yeah, I think like he had a, like a blocked nose situation. Papa's a cute kitty that needs to blow his nose voice. That's what I, that's what I thought. Sorry, uh, clank. But I think Miriam will be partnering with Pop today. 
Pop gives a big smile as he steps up to the same station as Miriam. I'm a chef. <laughs> My name is Chef. He holds up a banana and, without peeling it, proudly eats the entire thing. It's disconcerting, but Miriam is too kind to act grossed out. I love your enthusiasm, Pop. She looks at you like, really? This kid? But it's too late to change your not to change, change, change your choice now. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. And scooching up a little closer to Colonel Sanders, of course. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner? Colonel Sanders. Obviously, his finger looking good. Check it. Uh, what is this? Steak tartare. Seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. True. Um, your octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Yes! Mashed potato. We all know. Colonel Sanders needs his mashed potato. Maybe he hasn't got a good rest type yet. So we're going to bring my grandmother's mashed potato and gravy into that KFC deal box. It's going to be a big winner. That combined with his chicken? Forget about it. Your grandmother's mashed potato and gravy. Oh, he liked that. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Just like joining in Colonel Sanders, am I right? Colonel Sanders' cats are... Wait, what? <laughs> Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beat red. Embarrassed you. Quickly turn away. Oh, Colonel! Don't look at me like that. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please. Let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Ah, oh, Ashley. Ashley had a distinctive voice, if I remember correctly. It looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? Hey, we're just cooking partners. Mind your own business, Ashley. Sanders' heart is my business. You'd better keep your fingers off my man. Did someone call for me? Uh, no. Jeez, Van Van. Well, I'm over here crushing Joinin's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns. Arms full of built potatoes. He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Is that a JoJo character? Yes, I like to believe so. Oh, howdy there, Ashley Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Jordan was struggling, so so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could teach you a thing or two about a fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. <laughs> Doubt it! Don't be so rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But, Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. But one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel, if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Do we turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks, in your time of need? Or do we turn to Miriam, your forever bestie, who always has your back? I'm actually going for Miriam, to be honest. You turn to Miriam, and as soon as you find her, she senses it and looks back. This girl's friend in need radar is second to none. She immediately comes running over. I picked right. I've already forgotten. Oh, she's like, Is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them. I actually think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving. Leaving you in the dust. Viz, uh, viz. My skills as a chef, perhaps. But stepping away from this competition, you are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend. But join in as my partner for today's activity. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. 
down those cute goggies and their short butt but sturdy- oh, Sorry, short butt. Short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream and flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hands. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Here we go. Gravy flows down the mold of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be proud. Colonel Sanders holds a, sp <laughs> a spork out at you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spark, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. This moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sparkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sparkful of mashed potatoes right into <laughs> Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, did you do something? Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious! Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, join in! We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena! Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you! You throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat whatever it lands on! Gosh, his voice hurts my throat. Can I ask potatoes fish? Van Van rushes back over. Sorry, Van Van rushes back over. A covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. Uh, that ends now. It is I who will have the first bite, and you will look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No! Don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was thrashed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him. <laughs> oh my goodness. Everyone sit back. Don't take another bite. It has just killed a student. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. No, Pop. Pop winces in pain for just a moment. Then is almost immediately back to his... Oh, oblivious self. Oopsie, tastes like poison. The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. <laughs> He's fine. He was good. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um... Hello! I just turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? For real? Oh, come on! You follow Colonel Sanders out the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speak softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time 
to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes? Join in? There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there! <laughs> There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping and never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights. Like so many, like so, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I... You, shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. <sighs> that, would, <laughs> that would have been the ghost. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. The Spork Monster! No, I'm not doing another voice that hurts my throat. The Spork Monster is here to fight a hero! I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid! Be very afraid! Of me! Because I'm a monster! See? Is this rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further... It's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? <laughs> attack! You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one you buy one damage. Uh, attack again. You decide to go on the attack. It worked last time, right? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster won't forget this. Spork Monster is really feeling threatened by your attack. Spock Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. At this rate, this semester will probably be over before this fight. The Spock Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spock Monster uses Utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. All right, fine. Defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You curl into a ball. I'm not cut out for this. You feel vulnerable. Spock Monster prepares for the ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Vile villain. Your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons energy of 1,000 chickens. But by power punch. Pot by power punch to 10 damage. Spock Monster is defeated. You... You saved me. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Forget mercy. Finish him. Or do we spare this wretched beast? I'm going to spare the wretched beast because I want to impress Colonel Sanders. You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of the gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast. And don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. Oh, I won't forget this. And I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster s scuffles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. <gasps> it's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm, Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. <gasps> the image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. You're awake on day two, 
and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you've discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders' cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used... Redacted. And then there was the secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school, which is where we leave it. Make sure to subscribe to this gaming channel if you are not already. And then go and check out a video over on the main channel or whatever, if that's what you're interested in. I don't know. Get some of the lemon cotton merch. It's cute. It's in the description below. I will see you guys next time.